So step three was about moving things around, move all the X's to that side, and things that don't have an X, move them to that side. Uh, the trouble with that, of course, is that sometimes you can't move them because they're trapped. That's what brings us to uh, step number one. Sometimes you can't move all the atoms there and all the X-less items over there. The X's may be trapped inside parentheses or they may be trapped inside fractions. Let me give you the most benign example of that. See the X's? I can't just start moving them. They're trapped inside a term that has parentheses. So this task tells, takes us to step number one. Step number one says you should free the X's so that you can move them around. Here's the perfect medicine for that. Whenever they're trapped inside, I could go like this, 3x, 3 times x, this is called the distributive law. And over here, I'll write it as 2 times x plus negative 5. I like pluses better, so on the left-hand side, I use distributive law. On the right-hand side, I use definition of a minus b. And so I have 3 times x plus 3 is equal to 2 times x plus uh, negative 10. I did the distributive law by inspection here. And that right there frees the x's from being trapped inside the parentheses. See, they were trapped inside the parentheses. Now they're free. This is step one. Free the x's. Free the x's if they're trapped inside parentheses or in fractions. Free them so that now I can move my things around. I go 3x. This moves to the other side. It becomes negative 2x. And that moves to the other side, it becomes negative 3. So this will be cancellation law of addition, where we added a bunch of things. This is step 2. Move all the x's to one side, and all the x-less items to the other side. Now step 3. Gather your x's. 3 plus negative 2x is equal to negative 10 plus negative 3. This is Step three, gather your x's by distributive law. And of course, step four, kill the coefficient. Negative 10 plus negative three, all over three plus negative two, kill the coefficient. Step four, beautiful. Step one, two, three, four. This, my friends, this is the winning strategy for all linear equations in the entire universe. If you can free them if they're trapped inside terms, then you can get, you can move them around. You can move all the x's to that side and that all the x-less items to that side. And if you can get to that step, and if it's a linear equation, you can factor out the x. You can get to step 3, and then, you, of course, you can kill the coefficient every single time for every equation in the universe. This is the winning strategy. A winning strategy, anyways. You can invent your own if you like. I'm just giving you one, item, one procedure that works. All right, this is the most benign case where your, your x's are trapped, and you're using step 1 to free them. We should do a couple more examples where you have to use step 1 here. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at this puppy. We've got a linear equation, and uh, the idea here is to go through step one first. Free the x's. This x is trapped inside the parentheses here. This x is trapped as a numerator in a fraction. And this x is trapped as a numerator in a fraction. The perfect medicine to free the x here would be the distributive law. I would distribute the 3 there and the 3 there. That would give me 3x plus 3 times 1, which is 3. And there I use the distributive law and the times table. Uh, next, I would say, uh, here I could say uh, negative. I have that, that negative. Uh, and here I could break that up into, into two pieces here. 4 over 2 and x over 2. That's the opposite of ATT, where you add the tops on a fraction. If I was to add the tops, I would just get this step. Well, to unadd them, it would look like this before you added the fraction. It's a way of splitting up the fractions into little tiny pieces. We talked about this when we did ATT. That separates them. And then, uh, let me see, 13 minus, here I can say this is 11x over 3 plus 1 over 3. Again, by ATT. Also used ATT. Now I go on and I distribute this. This gives me, um, I could say, ne negative 1 there. 3x plus 3 plus negative uh, 1 times x over 2 plus negative 1 times 4 over 2 is equal to 13 uh, plus negative 1 times 11 x over 3 plus negative 1 times uh, 1 over 3. I can always squeeze a 1 there by the minus theorem and have that 1 be the thing I distribute. So now it looks like this 
And what I've done here is a very, very important step. This is step one, which is free the excess. Look at all the X terms. This is not trapped inside of parentheses or a fraction. This thing is not trapped. None of my X's are trapped anymore. I've freed them. And now I can move them around. So if it has an X, it'll stay on this side. Negative one half X. I'll let you think about why that's the same thing. And then this one is negative 11 X's over three. On this side, it would be positive 11 X over three. Uh, this is by cancellation law of addition and some other things where I'm adding stuff to both sides so I can get all the X's on this side and things with no X they're gonna go on that side alright this one does not have an X so it comes over here as a negative 3 that's by adding cancellation law of addition adding a killer on that side negative 3 let me see this one stay there that one does not have an X so it's got to go over there on this side it was negative 4 over 2 on that side over there it will be positive 4 over 2 this one stays here because it it has no excess. Whoa. So it stays in here. This one had excess, so I moved it over there. I've already counted for that. And this one had no excess, so it stays here. This is negative 1 over 3. And there you go. This is, of course, uh, step 2, which was move move all the excess to one side. And things that don't have an X, they got to go to the other side. Okay, then we go on to step 3. Step 3 says gather your excess. So here it looks like we distributed a 3, an x, so we can undistribute it. 3 plus negative 1 half plus 11 over 3. And that, of course, is equal to negative 3 plus 4 over 2 plus 1 plus negative 1 over 3. This is by distributive law. You can simplify some of these pieces if you want, but that's not as essential. Simplifying is for the birds. This is step 3 where we uh, collect, I collected all my x's into just one x. So now I just have one x, one coefficient, and no x's on the other side. I'm ready for my fourth and final step, kill the coefficient. And yippee will be done here in no time. 4 over 2 plus 1 plus negative 1 over 3. Then the fun will be over when we finish. See, sometimes that's why I don't like to finish a problem. Because then the fun is over. Alright, that's it. This this procedure here, these uh, these this strategy is a winning strategy for all linear equations in the universe. Free the x's, move them all to one side, the excess things go to the other side, gather your x's using the distributive law and kill the coefficient. It'll always, always, always work. Alright, that was fun. It's your turn to try a few of these. We'll see you guys here next time. Peace. The winning strategy for everything. All linear equations free them so that you can move them move them on one side so you can gather them collect them gather them so that you can kill the coefficient kill the coefficient the winning strategy for everything all linear equations linear equations